I want you to know that I'm here by the grace of God. My name is Jesus Velez. I once was dead, but I am alive forevermore. I am not the Jesus that came down first because he was without sin. I am the one who was born in sin. And he pulled me out of sin. Okay? So my name is Jesus. And I'm here by the grace of God. I am his son. Believing me. <coughs> I am his son. We're going to start with the Our Father. You will repeat after me if you can. And you will say the words as I say. Our Father. What in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into the Oh, 
God, God, look at the thief. Jesus said unto her, That brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, yet, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, we should come into the world. When she had so said, she went her way and called Mary. A sister secretly saying, The master is come, come for thee. As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came unto me. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him, the Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her. Then they saw Mary, and she rose up hastily and went out, following her, saying, She going unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come, Jesus was. And so she fell down at his feet, saying, Unto the Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, Where have they laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could that this Jesus, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Therefore, again groaning in himself, coming to the grave, Jesus. There was a cave and a stone made upon him. Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Mary, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. For he has been dead four days. Jesus said unto him, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place that there was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people who stand by my sin, that they may believe that thou hast said. And when he thus was spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, help oh! And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lucy, and let him go. Blessed be the word of God. Lucy. We heard that go in the Old Testament with Moses. Go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You have to let my people go. You can't hold them in the grave anymore. Because I am the resurrection. Jesus is telling Mary, I'm the resurrection. Don't need to hold them in the grave anymore. Set them free. Make it happy. Make the family happy. I come so that you may have life and that you may have life more abundantly. Jesus is the resurrection. He is risen.
They're so angry now, they look at the cut of everybody's head. They're so angry now. at his 
Judas has his gospel. Thomas has his gospel. And I just heard the other day that they tried to, to, try to pollute and contaminate the true gospel of Christ. But the truth is that the word of God is no lie. Jesus is Jesus and Judas is Judas. You can't worship God and man. Judas chose to, to worship man. Simple. You can't be between two opinions. You got Martha in one direction, you got man in the other direction. How are you going to meet Jesus when you come? When you need Jesus, how are you going to meet him? Are you going to just stand in front of him and tell him, listen, I need you to bless me. I, I'm, I'm doing trouble. I, 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 I'm in trouble. My life is trouble. My husband left me. I have kids. All this, and you're standing there. The approach is very important. How do you come to Jesus? Yeah, you can. When your son or your daughter falls down at your feet, you know they do. When they cry, you know they do. It's the approach. How do we approach Jesus? Martha approaches him standing. I know. Yeah, I know that when the Messiah comes. I know. Jesus says, I'm here. Okay, I know. How many times do you hear, I know? You ever tell your friends about Jesus and say, yeah, I know. I know, I've been there, done that. We must continue in 
us Christ. No matter what our parents taught us. And we're reading the word of God and they tell you, you know, get away from that. And get a job. Go out there and work hard. Bring money. And if you're hearing that word of God, they should love you. They should move you. You should stay there. We should not be told to get away from the word of God. We have to continue in God's word. Jesus is saying, I knew that you're here. Why was that? Because Jesus was in the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. He's in the Word of God. He is who He is. You can't forget where we came from. Jesus didn't forget where He came from. He is the Word of God. And you look around and you will see that when they said Jesus to Jesus, they said, you know, many good works, He says, have I shown you for my Father? For which of those works do you stone me? Why are, you, why are you looking to kill me? I'm sure you're alive. I told you a lot. I've been around you all the time. Why are you trying to kill me? Because Jesus is talking to the dead. They try to kill me. So yes, unless you repent, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Except you're born of water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Can't go. If we backtrack to the priest, we understand the same way. Nicodemus came on to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know. Remember what Martha said? Oh, I know. That's what Martha said. I know. Nicodemus turns around and says to Jesus, I know. He uses the same word. He says, he says that there was a man of Pharisees named Nicodemus. The same came unto Jesus by night and said unto him, We know that thou art a man of God. For thou cannot do with these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. If is God with you, think about it. Is God with you? Is he home somewhere? Or you left him in the backyard? Or you left him in your job? In the bathroom? Or is God with you? Is he sitting on your right hand? Is God with you? So I say, is God with you? Think about it. Open your eyes. Listen. Is God with you? Answer yourself. Is God with me? How do I know that God is with me? How do I know that? I need to know how God is with me. I don't want to know if he's going to give me my wife back or my children or my happiness. I don't want to know this. Or he's going to give me my car, he's going to give me my job. He's going to give me prosperity. How want you to know it. You're with me. God, are you with me? Can you say, God, are you with me? Can you, are you with me, God? Jesus says,
and we see flesh and we see spirit. He just separated both. Then he says, Marvel not, don't be surprised if I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Can you say it? Ye must be born again. Can you say it? Ye must be born again. Can you tell your friends out there, the people, you tell them from today on, ye must be born again. You must become like a child. Like that child on the mother right now. You must become like a child. Obedient. Loving. Staying by the bosom of the mother. You must be a child again. A man, whether you muscle, whoever you're rich, whoever actor or movie star you are, whether it be the, the president of Google or whatever people out there, they must be born again. Because if they're not born again, they go into hell. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him 
And this is the record of John. When Jews sent priests and Levites to Jerusalem to say, What the? And he confessed and denied not. But confessed, Are you not the Christ? What then? Are you liars? He says, No, I'm not. Are they not prophet? Yes and no. Then say they unto him, Who are they? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What saith thou about thyself? He says, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. I say, Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. 
So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return void. Jesus is the word of God. Jesus will not return void. The word that proceed out of God's mouth is Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It cannot return void. Jesus has returned. He has risen. And here he says, it shall not return to the boy. Jesus will not return to the boy. He will give you what you want. He is, I tell you, he is, he is, and was, and will always be. He's the truth. He's, he's life. He's the way, he's the bread, he's the shepherd. He's everything for you. He says, the word shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Now listen very carefully to this saying, because Jesus says, It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that. If you put the word in your heart and you put it in your mind, it will do the work. The word of God will do the work for you. It's simple. Sometimes when we teach people how to drive, we tell them it's easy, but when they when, when you first started, you knew it was hard. For the person who knows, it's easy, but the person who's just starting out is like, this is too hard. And we find out the same truth even in the Word of God. We've been in the Word of God so long, so I might tell somebody who's just coming in, it's easy. And they should they say, no, it's too hard. Sometimes it's that way. But Jesus says, my yoke is easy. It's easy. It's just opening your mouth. The word of God says it. It's just uttering the word of God. Psalm 78 says, Give ear, O you people, to my Lord. Incline your ear to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter the dark sayings of all. It's easy. It's talking about God. Whenever you guys go out there and talk about God, you know what's happening? You are telling everybody that you are working for God and God is your boss. He's your boss. If you have anything to say against me, you say it to God. Don't tell me nothing. If you have anything to say, say it to God. He's my boss. He pays me. He gave me this authority to come here and talk to you. He sent me to tell you what you must do to be saved. He sent me to tell you how you can keep your life and not lose it. He sent me to tell you to come into the waters so that you may buy, sell, eat, drink, <laughs> You can do this, he says. I'll tell you that God will use you and all Riches of the Gentiles shall come because you are needed people. You are people of faith. Let them know you have faith. Let them know that you believe in God. Whatever they say, because they they will come of trouble. Their days of trouble will come. And if you continue in the word of God, God will send them to you. Because you will be an intercessor. So that you may lay hands and pray for these people. Because you are merciful people. But they will know that God is in you, the truth. We have read it. We must be the same way. You have children. 
You have needs, you have hunger, you have thirst, but everybody in the world is, has the same complaint. But they don't have Christ. Not everybody. Everybody loves money, but not everybody loves God. You know that. You go anywhere, China, anywhere, a yang and a yang, whatever, it's money. They love it, but not everybody loves God. And that makes us a special people. But you will have something that they don't have. You will have, look, you don't need a high school diploma for this. You don't need a college or a master's degree for this. You don't need to have any kind of diploma in theology or anything else. Nicodemus says, Nicodemus says to Jesus, I know that you are a man from God. Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. I'm sure his wall was filled with practice and all kinds of things that he got from, from that time. How high he was. And yet he came to Jesus. A guy that had nothing. Everybody thought this guy's going to Who is he? His sister and his brother say, here, listen to that. That's what Jesus wants to do with you. Now that you're with me, you have it all. You shouldn't be asking for nothing. But he says, this is the way you should pray. I teach you how to pray. James says, you know, you, you pray and ask not, you know, because you, have, you, you pray and you don't get it because you, you ask it wrong. You think it's the bread of bread that you eat, but he says, no, it's the word of God. Do you have your bread, your daily bread? Do you have your daily bread? The daily bread is the verse that you keep. For he shall not much remember the days of his life because God has his hand in the joy of his heart. God has put my heart in the right place. You understand? My heart used to be in the left and he put it on my right. I don't think there's nobody that has the heart in the right place. Do you agree with that? Everybody, supposedly, if you go to any doctor and say, no, your heart is in the left. But no, but Jesus put my heart in the right place. Cast the net on the right side of the boat. Jesus prophesies to you over here and to you, whoever's watching out there, the whole world, a prophecy to the priest. He says, Hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power, coming in the clouds of heaven. Jesus was telling us that they're going to see us. Because we're always in the Word of God. These are His people, He says. You're going to see the Son of Man come. Because these people sit at the right hand of God. These people have chosen to sit at the right hand of God. If you read Psalm 110, you will see it and you will hear it to say that the Lord shall come to my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Jesus says, just before the cross, just before he gets there, he says, Verily, verily, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power. We must sit at the right hand of the power. So now, who's Jesus? We'll start from the beginning. Let's go from the beginning. We say, Blessed be God, Adam, Abel. Seth, Enos, Noah, and Shem. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Joseph and Moses. David and all the prophets who came for his glorious name. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Who is Jesus? He blessed as he taught and healed with his word. Compassion gave sight to the blind. He cleansed the leper and raised the dead who Judas betrayed and Peter denied. No one gave their life up for him. Neither were objected of him being nailed on the cross. And on the cross, they mocked him. And on the cross, he forgave them. Gave up the ghost and died. Buried, and on the third day, he arose. He showed himself unto many, even to Thomas, the doubtful one, saying, Blessed are they that have not seen, yet believe that I am the one. God bless you, children. 
Ah, God bless you, children. Peace of the Lord be with you. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He said, Blessed are they that have not seen. And God bless you all that you have seen. Everyone here has witnessed the Word of God. My son, my pastor, Robert, Stanley, Diane, Mark, and uh, forgive me, but everyone here has seen and beheld the Word of God. There's nobody that's left God. You and everybody else that holds on to the Word of God from today on must hold on to it now because the time is short. Get everything where you can get it now because the Word of God is going to be contaminated. They're planning on polluting it. They're going to confuse it because now the new Tower of Babel has begun and they are there in the sky. They call satellites. This is the Tower of Babel. John saw it and he was amazed at Revelation. He saw Babylon, mystery Babylon, he says. He said, Why are you surprised to see this? Because these things must be. It goes on and on and on. But blessed are you if you know these things. Because John, it was told to John, get the little book, eat it. And he did. He was waiting for this, don't forget, right? He, he was waiting for this. John, over 100 years old, now he's waiting for revelation of Jesus Christ. And there's an angel with a little book in it. And he says, oh, take the little book and he, please give me the little book. He took the book and he ate it. And what did it do? It, it was sweet, it was mutton, but it was tasted good. But it made his belly bitter, bitter taste. Right now, it's happening the same thing. You have a star, a wormwood. You know, wormwood causes anything. It's bitter, and when it pours into the water, it makes the water bitter. You notice now that now religion and preaching of Christianity is, is bitter. You know, it's bitter. People don't want to hear it. Who made it bitter? What is the star that was fall from heaven as lightning? Twin towers fall down. Religion? What religion? Not because these things are happening. And remember what it says, you should never forget. These things happen, it has turned Christianity bitter. Really? It has put a bitter taste. When you talk about Jesus, you're worse than Islam. When you talk about Jesus, you're worse than Buddha. The Jews, you're worse. You're, you're the worst people. There yeah, is. Think about it. It's happening before your eyes. He says, you know, <laughs> you're blind and you don't see. But yet you have the power to do something about it because Jesus said, I am with you. And the Christians, because they don't believe that, because these two witnesses that fell down into the ground and slapped in the face, religion is bitter. Now, a lot of Christians are converting into cults. And Jesus teaches us the kingdom of God is not a food and clothing, but yet they wrap themselves up with clothing. What's going on? It's a Christian knows this, but yet they're wrapping themselves in these clothing and to hide themselves and take the women and mistreat treat them and misuse them. And when is it going to come the time when they're going to tell you don't read a certain part of the scriptures because you're going to offend somebody? When is that going to happen? When is the, they're going to be taking these pictures of these saints and all these beautiful things of God and Put clear windows so they can look inside and see what you're talking about, see what you're doing. Well, think about it. You have to tell the people, Jesus is here. You have to tell them, He's risen. He's here. And you have to come.
come back. That's your first love. Tell them. Because hell is going to open up and it's going to swallow down many. Oh, many. And it's real. Jesus is a witness to that. This is why he came. You know, when Jesus was on the cross and he's looking at his mother, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a hurtful feeling when you're standing down the cross, when you're, you know, nailed to the cross and you, your mother's standing there looking at you and, and you say, Mom, you know, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not going to be able to have coffee with you or drink or have a piece of bread with you, Mom. It's a volunteer thing. I'm going to die. And I'm going to leave you. You're watching at me. You're looking at me. And I'm not going to sit with you anymore and have coffee or tea or have a piece of bread. I'll tell you about my problems. That you're the only one that can give me some sort of counseling. Even Christ himself. And I'm leaving for these people. For the, all these people out here in the world. I'm aiming that love to save them. And now, 2,000 years later, these people still don't get it. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? That's why John, he was amazed when he saw that Babylon, that mystery Babylon. Just keeps popping up, doesn't it? We just want to kick our own and save the other one. And he said, put them to no mission. Why not? Women, God bless you. But women, you must understand what the Word of God says about you too. You have a lot to do with the goings on in the world. We love our children. We do. But we must love God more. Mary loves God more. Because she stood over there watching her son die to save your lives. But yet if you have a child that is a homosexual and going into sin, you refuse to stand up for that sin and you receive it, accept it, and say, I'm pure. And he's got some sort of disease. And you make allowance for that. And you turn your back on God. Abraham was not afraid to offer up Isaac. Mary knew that her son was going to be crucified. You understand that it's for the children that Jesus died. He died for their lives. He says, so that they may have life. Bring the children unto me. People have preference. People prefer to do things. Judas preferred to betray Jesus. He preferred it. It was a choice. He made it. He walked with Jesus. He chose. That's a choice. There is a preference. There is a preference. People prefer. And we watch the preference. People make choices, and we know that. But you, Mark, I am. The son and the other son, and another son, and a son, and a son, and a son. You know this. You're hearing it now. What's going to be when a sinner says, listen, I prefer little children. But because you don't want me to have little children, you're discriminating against me. Because that's what I prefer. You are discriminating against me because I like little kids. That's a preference. What is the truth? Jesus said, I'm going to be spoken. And said, you'll be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's what he says. A spirit and truth. You have to have the spirit of God, and no matter what the criticism is, you have to take it. You have to take the blows. If you get smacked on one cheek, turn to the the other. That's what you're going on. You're going to get smacked. You're going to suffer from persecution. Everything is going to come down on you. But let me tell you one thing. The Christian is going to suffer persecution. But so must the sinners suffer persecution. It should be one way. It should be two ways. No. It's all about two. If the Christian is going to suffer persecution, then they must suffer persecution. What is this? Only we have to suffer persecution? No. 
And they want to come to know Jesus. It takes work to know Jesus. And it takes a lot of work. So we, as a people, must cry out and tell all the authorities and government, listen, you better get your act straight and you gotta let people know that America, there's Christians here. There are Christians in America. You have to let them know. The news reporters shut them down. As soon as they come up, turn off the radio. I have a preference too. I prefer it. As soon as I hear of anybody who's speaking about my Lord and they sing me this song, I turn off the radio. I don't want to support them. I, that's how I choose. I have the power to shut it off. And I'll tell you, man, if everybody stopped turning off these programs that are attributed and trying to get our children there, you see when nobody buys their products, you'll hear them cry. As soon as you start hurting them in the pocket. Remember, it hurt Judas. And it was hurting him in the pocket. And he went and hanged himself. So we too. If you hear of anybody out there that is kicking out on a savior, then don't, don't promote their products. You're a Christian. Let them know that they are Christians in this let them know. Now, I have how long? Two, three, four, five? How long? Okay. Closing up. You understand the message. And I'm speaking to the people of this church, Latter Ray, William Burris, Pastor, and I thank him again for giving me this opportunity. Because he is doing a very good job out here. Let me tell you, many are called, but few are chosen. I am so happy that the few are here. I'm glad to be found among the few. I am so happy to be here today in Pennsylvania, in Ellisburg, in Mount Carmel. And like Elijah said, how long will you be between the two opinions? If the Lord be your God, then serve Him. But if Baal be your God, then serve Him. If you're filthy, continue to be filthy. If you're righteous, be righteous. If you're holy, be holy. Because the time is coming. And He will pass the judgment. So, like again, today, if you will hear my voice, repent, turn away from this crooked generation. Get away from this crooked generation. I tell the kids out there, turn away from these crooked generation who are trying to defy you and make merchandise of you by using our Lord and Savior as their money maker. We serve Jesus and Jesus alone here in this church. Again, I believe in God and Jesus Christ, God's only beloved Son, whom He sent to give up His life for me so that I might live and I will always be His friend. Take the book, for thou art worthy to open up the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto God by thy blood. Holy, 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 the God Almighty, just in true our ways, thou King of saints. Yes, he is our king. Again, praise the Lord, you people. The dead don't praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The dead don't praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The dead don't praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The dead don't praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We will praise the Lord from this day on and forever. Praise you, the Lord. The Lord be with you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the words. And what did it say? Word. Word. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning. God. All things were made by God. That's right. There is nothing made that was made. 
And it was life. And the life was the life of man. And the light shone into darkness. And the darkness came. 